It's been a bit since I built a truly massive orc. Let's fix that. For the base of this war boss, I'm using a Contemptor Dreadnought gifted to me by Only Death here on YouTube. It's a great sculpt and the perfect base for war boss armor. It did have all this filthy ultramarine heraldry on it though, so the first step was to shave and scrape it off until the armor was nice and clean. As with my other war bosses, I wanted it to be clear that this was a giant orc and not just an orc on a robot body. To achieve that, I decided to use Gorgon arms for my war boss. They're a little less bulging than the arms of my other war bosses, but still nicely taut and sinewy. To fit the first arm, I carved into the shoulder socket until it fit flush. For the right arm, I picked this dreadnought double stack bolter. I filled the outside of the gorgon arm with green stuff and then pressed the double bolter to it. The inside of the gorgon arms have straps already sculpted in and I figured I could go in later and hide the blank spots. I glued the shoulder into the dreadnought torso in a position where it looked like it was pumping upward. Over it, I green stuffed on a deaf dread pauldron to start giving the armor an orky feel. I then used more green stuff to attach the other arm. I didn't catch the process on camera, but this is an orc head I mutilated by cutting the chin and back off. This was so it would fit into the arch where the original dreadnought head sits, so that the collar portion could later have orky teeth added to look like a jaw plate. For the left arm, I attached a double bladed chainsaw. Once it was on, I put the torso on the legs of the dreadnought and realized I'd misjudged the scale of his arms. They were much longer than I thought they'd be, and combined with his small head and squat torso gave him a really strong chibi orc feel. Cute, but not really menacing. Finding replacement arms proved difficult. The original dreadnought arms are a tad small and don't look organic. Fire giant ones are way too swole. Bulgar ones are too small. With none of these options proving fruitful, I went back to the gorgon arms and decided to try and shorten them and merge them with death dread limbs. I snipped off portions of the death dread arm so it could sit along the back of the gorgon arm in a power brace. I glued the arm in and added green stuff to merge the gap so it would look plausibly like the arm was going into the metal portion. To buckle up the forearm, I filled the main gap with green stuff, then added the curved armor plate of the Death Dread limb. On the end, I attached a servo claw where his hand would otherwise fit. I thought about bulking up the bottom of the forearm to make it look more plausibly like there was a whole limb under there, but I kind of liked the idea of a bionic arm and so just left it. As an arm guard, I glued together two Killican pauldrons and glued them to the arm. For the forearm, I glued together two of the Death Dread armor plates and attached them with a green stuff elbow. Over that, I put another pair of spiked pauldrons. To start filling out the waist, I attached a pair of Killikang pauldrons to the front and back. The design goal I settled for this Contemptor Warboss was to make it plausible that there was flesh under the armor, even if some of it had been stretched or severed or integrated with servo and steel. With that in mind, I started work on the legs. The first thing I did was expand the length of the thighs with simple spacers, which helped minimize the chibi orc look. I glued on some more PVC spacers so that over them I could fit green stuff copies I'd made of the Death Dread armor plates. I then sculpted in some bulk to his legs with Millie Pudding. And to hide how poor his Gornal area looked, I used green stuff to craft some ragged cloth, and over that placed a green stuff cast of an orc armor plate. At this point, my war boss was looking pretty good, but his silhouette had gotten kind of cluttered. As much as I loved them, the pauldron armor was hiding the organic nature of his arms, so I took them off. I also felt like his back reactor could be improved on. I pried off the original one, snipped off the connectors, and used a glob of green stuff to attach this exhaust from an Imperial Knight. It has a nicely brutal, orky look to me, and I positioned it so a little of the exhaust was visible from the front to help with his imposing silhouette. The last thing to fix was my warboss's head. While it had been a good idea, cutting the head the way I had forced it into a really static and stiff pose. Worse, it looked a little goofy and didn't give him a lot of character. I pried it out and replaced it with this third party head from Gear Guts Mech Shop. They offer some really awesome orc 3D prints, and I especially like this head. To help it fit, I snipped off the original Dreadnought collar and green stuffed him and neck. And with that, my warboss was ready to wah. In height, he's roughly equal to my warboss in mega armor, roughly 15 feet. He's slimmer than my two other warbosses, but I think that gives him a nicely savage edge, and the combination of helmet and power claws leans into the more crazed aspect of the orcs. Thanks again to Only Death here on YouTube for gifting me the Contemptor. And if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, or check out some of the other massive orcs I've made in my Building Bigger Orcs playlist. Thanks for watching.